First and now is your official BC Lions podcast. It's Matt Baker and Nick Kowalski back. February the 1st, we're recording this, Nikki. It's funny, uh, December kind of goes by quick. You know, Christmas time, holiday gatherings, seems like you're always on the go. I mean, work is kind of shutting down for the year, but it's going by fast. January just kind of, it kind of chugs along. It's kind of like you're running the ball with Christian McCaffrey. You're eating up clock. It's productive, but it doesn't necessarily go by too fast. Uh, you catch what I'm saying? Hard to believe, though, we're, we're into February. And we will be talking a bit of Super Bowl in a little bit, but... It's still a ways away from Gamloops, so we still have a long way to go, but yeah. Just three and a half, three months and a week or so, something? Or? Yeah, it's kind of just checking off another box, right, from, from January to February for me, and kind of free agency's right around the corner now is kind of what I think. Yeah, and uh, since we last spoke, a uh, great chat with Ryan Rigmaiden a couple of weeks back. Uh, since then, uh, some more work is done. Uh, BC Lions hanging on to some key pieces this week. And who knows, maybe by the time we drop this episode, there'll be even more to talk about. We always encourage you to keep it tuned. Uh, BCLions.com, uh, we're pretty active and on YouTube, social media, Instagram, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call that platform these days. Are you calling it X or Twitter? What are you calling it? I've kind of been informed to call it X. It's yeah. Twitter in my head, but got to get that... Got to get yeah. that in, into me as X, yeah. You have to, you have to adapt uh, to the times, definitely, indeed. <laughs> One funny note about that is um, my, I manually update my apps on my phone, so I, I didn't update it for for like months. Oh, yeah? So it was still Twitter for me when, when the blue uh, bird icon for a while when everyone had that X, that black X. And then when I was going through my list of like the apps that needed the updates or, you know, it gives you like that list. But so the ma- when I was manually doing it, I accidentally, I, I would always avoid clicking on Twitter slash X. I think, what, yeah, I, I think mine is updated on its own. Yeah, that's, that's it's the X, but it's got, it's like, it's got like white specks on it. It's not, <laughs> it's not a very clean logo. I don't know. Not to get off the rails though, but on my, on your app, it says like, there'll be like a, like a notification banner. So it says like 35 or whatever. And that's how many apps you have to update. So I usually just go in there and I just kind of spam them all and hit them all. And then, but I would always skip over Twitter because I didn't want to become X. And then one day I just kind of was doing my like spam uh, update, update, update button, and uh, I accidentally hit uh, Twitter. So n- now I have X. <laughs> long story short. So that's a long story. We're going with X. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we are active on X. Like I'm saying, it's it's kind of the calm before the storm from a free agency uh, outlook. To give uh, fans and listeners a sense uh, of the upcoming key dates, we're recording this on the Thursday, February 1st. As of 9 a.m. our time, Sunday the 4th, it would be of February. Again, we're into February. It's the negotiation window period. Legal tampering, some call it. Teams could submit formal offers to players set to become free agents on the 13th of February. And they register those offers with the league. That goes until Sunday the 11th, uh, a week I think. I think it's Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday that comes to an end. At that point... It shuts down for two days. The, t- the original teams can then negotiate exclusively with their pending free agents again, match whatever offers they got or exceed them. And then the period opens uh, the Tuesday the 13th at 9 a.m. our time. So about 12 days out from free agency opening up. How active will Alliance be? We heard from both Neil McAvoy and Rick Campbell earlier this week. Uh, again, head to our YouTube, our website, bclions.com. Not really tipping our hand too much, but uh, the one thing Neil especially was alluding to, Nick, was these are tough decisions we have to make. Uh, as of this recording, Matthew Betts, not signed. Marcus Sales, Jalen Edwards Cooper, sticking with guys who were starters uh, the last couple of years. They will need new contracts. Other teams will be allowed to make formal offers to these players coming on Sunday. But is it a good problem to have? Uh, There's a lot of these decisions that have to get made. And I think Neil even alluded to the fact that they could do a deal with Matthew Betts right now. But then the domino effect in terms of keeping others and maybe pursuing others in the middle of the month kind of gets impacted. Yeah, to echo Neil, it's a salary cap world and... I think when you ask that question about is it a good problem to have, you you look at the teams that are having these problems right now, and I think Winnipeg and Toronto are two of the teams that they have all these 
uh, marquee players that are still on sign and they're they're struggling too and the reason why I bring those teams up is they, they were both the first place teams last year and they're having the exact same problem so that kind of settles that question that it is a good problem to have but I mean you, th- those that those pressers the other day they're obviously not going to tip their hand I mean free agency is a negotiation process so you're not going to tip your hand before you do uh, this uh, negotiating with with free agents and your own guys too but um, Neil did mention the team is uh, interested in acquiring a veteran uh, backup quarterback, so that's something that that's a big on one the to record. Watch yeah, for, and yeah, that's going to be something we'll we'll pay attention to coming in free agency. But at the same time, yeah, you're not going to tip your hand. They made it clear that they want to get all their guys back uh, prior to free agency opening up, and um, but the the reality is there are going to be new players brought in, and that's that's exciting and both nerve wracking at the same time. I'd say. Yeah, and for the moment, let's focus on some key guys that we know are sticking around. Uh, we're going to speak to Thibaut Debaye in a few minutes. Uh, he's in Belgium. He's a very busy man uh, in his home country these days. Talk about him in a minute, but uh, we're going kind of in order here of, of those that came down earlier in the week. You can make an argument, maybe our most productive linebacker on the field Last season. In the playoffs, at least. And yeah, yeah, game high 12 tackles in the Western final at Winnipeg. Josh Woods is going to be back uh, for a fourth season. He joined us in late 2021, and he became a regular the season after. Josh Woods is back through 2025. Good one for special teams, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's, he's kind of worked his way up uh, this roster as a teamer, right? And then he became a rotational player. And now, right, as of right now, he's primed to be even get a larger role. And I think that uh, his pay raise, too, d- will demand a larger role for for a guy like him. And he's someone that's only 26 years old. He turned 26 in January, so he's kind of just entering the prime of his career. Um, and he's on that upward trajectory, too. So it's it's exciting to have Josh back. Um one one note uh, I know we'll talk about Arrow up a little later, but one note about Josh is that when we uh, he got he got a feature or a segment in in, in the October episode based on his pick six at Hamilton, and uh, we didn't get the chance to sit Josh down to, uh, to ask him about it, but we talked to his teammate Bo Lacumbo, his linebacker mate, and we pretty much asked Bo the questions kind of where. Um, describe the play what you saw from from josh's pick six and then also like the feeling of scoring your first touchdown because bo was the guy who scored a scored a touchdown in the cfl that was josh's first pro touchdown at the time and then bo answers and then we move on to whatever question we go on to and bo interrupts and he's like no he's like can i just say one thing about josh and then he we aired this in the episode but he goes on to say how how important of a role josh plays in this linebacker core or corpse um and just that it kind of takes all these guys that they rotate in and out, and he's happy to see Josh be successful. So I think that that story is kind of a test to the to the success Josh has had and the, and the the happiness of his teammates too. And the one key word is depth with linebackers. Jordan Williams they had to trade last year. He's since been traded again to Hamilton. Kind of interesting how that situation's gone, but. Uh, ben Halatic, another one of those guys, needs to be re-signed. If that one doesn't work out. Well, you have a guy like Ryder Varga waiting in the wings uh, as far as a national draft pick from a couple of years ago. So Josh Woods, well-earned, as mentioned, Thibaut Debaye. We'll talk to him uh, shortly here. The most successful global player uh, from a Lions perspective, I think we can agree, since that program came into effect in 2019, I think it was. Tadrick Hansen, you've written down here uh, of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah, probably the most productive global player league-wide. I know he's battled some injuries in the last year or two, but that's kind of the template a team is going for, a guy who can come in and play great special teams but also play a role on defense like Hansen has had. And uh, we're very excited to have global or have uh, Tebow back there in the defensive line rotation. 100%, and Tebow is not just a just – a- guy on a roster too I, I went into pff's uh, database from last year and just to look at the snaps that Tebow played on defense this number this number that i'm about to drop sounds larger than what you might expect but he had 472 defensive snaps last year yeah. throughout the entire season so he plays a large role on defense workhorse yeah we talk about how uh john bowman's defensive line they like to dress and rotate eight nine guys every game and Tebow is well into that rotation 
um, kind of to develop himself as a, as a good run stopper too up the middle there. You know, he's got a wider frame and and uh, definitely uses that in terms of bringing down running backs and plugging up a run gap. So um, someone who's also like we'll we'll ask him about, but fits right very well into the FTC mold uh, before the culture. He's uh, very well liked in the locker room, very uh, for the boys, as he would say, um, and just a, a good guy to have too. Definitely on the whole hair team too in the CFL. Oh mode. yeah. Yeah. Great, great hair on Tebow. Absolutely, and I uh, can't wait to talk to him here on this episode of First. And now, these battles uh, on the defensive line are going to be massive, to use a word that is uh, most suited here. Uh, a couple of these more under-the-radar signings might not resonate yet with the average casual Lions or CFL fan, but I know our assistant GM, Ryan Rigmaiden, who we spoke with last time, is excited about these guys Jonah Tavai, if that name rings a bell, one of four football-playing brothers. Of course, JR played here uh, with the Lions in 2021. Another brother has played for the New England Patriots in the last couple of years. So good bloodlines there. This was a guy who went to Seattle Seahawks minicamp in 2023. And maybe you chalk him up to his size. Maybe is a reason why he hasn't yet stuck down south. But I know... Rig Maiden and company are very excited to bring him into Kamloops. Tipa Nalei, again, a name that might not resonate. This was a three-year member of the Green Bay Packers from 2020 to 2022. Remember that Packers-Browns game on Christmas a few years ago? Baker's downfall, you might say. Baker's downfall. Well, well, Tipa played a big role in that. His first NFL sack was on Baker Mayfield. So... Plenty more coming, but exper- a good mixture of experience and hungry rookies, I think, is going to be prevalent, specifically when talking about this defensive line. Yeah, there's always newcomers, especially in training camp, right? It's such a heated position. It's a, it's a very physical position, so you get that on full display with these newcomers in training camp. and. Even from a roster perspective, too, that already exists, we, we we mentioned Daniel Joseph last episode that the team is very, very high very on a, a first-round pick from a couple of years ago. And then, I mean, Nathan Cherry is a guy that's coming back. I, I mean, he's kind of forgotten this mold, but he's a guy who went down with a torn ACL last year, and he's he's uh, rehabbing to get ready for the start of the season. And that's his third year, also a first-round pick, too. And then to keep the first-round pick talk going, Francis Bemi is in his second year. And he, I thought down the stretch, Bemi, especially um, in, that, in that Western final game, he, he came up big in a couple of big run stops. Play and, multiple positions, too, yeah, and, Francis and Bemi. Yeah, and Bemi is a big guy, too. So there's a lot of youth on the D-line, a lot, a lot of competition, as you just mentioned. So um, as, as we said earlier, a good problem to have. Yep, and you can read more about Cherry's road to recovery uh, on bclions.com. Stephen Chang spoke with Mr. Cherry last week. A couple notes from around the league as well. We talked about our old friend Jordan Williams, another new home, and he goes to Hamilton, and that makes sense. You connect the dots. Ed Hervey, now Hamilton's general manager, traded up to get Jordan first overall in 2020. That was a fun time. That was kind of we were in lockdown and the draft was virtual and we were at home trying to keep track of the picks and put out the content. And I found out minutes before the draft started, we had made the trade with Calgary to go up to number one. And we're on all these Zoom, we're on a Zoom call with our marketing uh, co workers. Uh, football Ops is on another call trying to keep us all updated. But it's funny to think back uh, to May 2020. We had no idea when we were going to training camp. As it turned out, we would not that year. But uh, Jordan Williams, uh, we wish him uh, the best of luck in Hamilton. But sticking in southern Ontario, uh, you're bi- and so am I. Uh, you wanted to talk about the Contez uh, Stiggers story. I think it's really cool. Very cool. Yeah. He is a uh, he is if for those that don't know him, he Quantes Stiggers, he was a rookie defensive back on uh, the Toronto Argonauts last year and a pure rookie too at that because he never played college football prior to signing with the Toronto Argonauts. Um, and then he goes on to be an East All-Star last season uh, and ended up winning the most outstanding rookie award last year too. So, um, star player and he's he's a young player too. He's born in 2002, which makes him draft eligible for the NFL. On the weekend, I wake up to I have Adam Schefter's notifications on just to keep, yeah keep saw up all with the, the saw all the activity, NFL news yeah. and I'm, I I wake up and there's a Adam Schefter notification and it's a, it's a tweet about Quantez Stiggers and uh, they're talk the, the context of it was that Stiggers is looking to become the third player ever to uh, get drafted to the NFL without playing college football and he's someone who like I just said played in the CFL last year 
Uh, I was playing in, he played in the East East West uh, Shrine Bowl this past week or this weekend I with believe. his Argos yeah. helmet. Which yeah, is the cool thing about yeah. it. Yeah, so just a really fascinating story, and I great think it, brand recognition. I think the the cool thing about it too is that it definitely opens up a new possibility where if athletes, younger athletes, say they see Quantes Stigger is making a name for himself in the CFL and and ultimately getting to the NFL if they do have that dream. There there's a route there to do that, so it's a, it's a unique route, and it's 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 cool to see it. it really, it really caught my my eye over the weekend great for our league yeah yeah, yeah that was kind of cool to see uh, the football world's reaction to that and yeah the east west bowl you've got the senior bowl going on now in alabama uh, listening uh, to the nfl uh, on sirius they're they're going all in with that coverage uh, i've heard interviews with michael Penix, and the nfl draft process is pretty much going to kick off right when the super bowl ends the combines like a week later right in mm-hmm. in indianapolis so yeah, definitely. Uh, it's definitely become a year-round sport, football, particularly down south. And uh, that's that's one of the reasons that people uh, love to eat up all that content, that's for sure. Uh, before we get to Thibaut Dubai, a uh, arrow up rolls on, almost coming to an end. What's coming up? Uh, we're going to recap uh, an impressive playoff win over the Calgary Stampeders, which was preceded by a pretty bad loss to close out the regular season. Remember how hollow that loss felt to end it? Um, got the bet, you got the bet sack record out of it? Yeah, you got the record out of it. Glass half Absolutely. full? Ab- yeah, always glass half full. And what what are you most looking forward to uh, for these playoff episodes? Well, the emotions are definitely out of full tilt again, I would say, in November. Uh, if, you, if you've watched October already, the highs and the lows of all these emotions in a football locker room are definitely on display. And it's the exact same thing in November, right? It's And it starts out, it's kind of the flip side there, flip the reverse though, where it starts out with that, that high. I was going to make a joke that I cut a Vernon Adams Jr. highlight pack in a Western semifinal game broke out uh, yeah. <laughs> against Calgary. Exactly. That's pretty much what it was. It was, it was. That was VA's yeah. day all the way. Yeah, yeah. That's a legacy game for VA. And then obviously, um, <laughs> we're recounting a season, so there's no spoilers, but going to Winnipeg and having that same result is um is definitely gonna be a, a storyline heading into twenty twenty four. And um we 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 show we show it all how it happened and it's it's content that I'm happy to produce or we're happy to produce as a team and um you see exactly all the emotions I really think is the way I like to describe it about what goes into the the final stretch of the season and also the playoffs of the CFL season. So Coming on Monday, the uh, air up is um, wrapping up. No pun intended. For this year, yes. Well, for last year, yeah. We're <laughs> yeah. gonna we're gonna do it again, starting uh, in free agency, yeah. the draft. So, don't you worry. And and the goal, of course, always is to have a much more celebratory ending in twenty twenty four. Grey Cup in Vancouver, which I'm looking forward to. But you always want to win the Grey Cup. Will it be extra special to do it at home? Yeah, sure. But the approach, the mindset, the goals will not change from year to year. Looking forward to the playoff arrow up wrap. And then for next year's, this coming year's, to be a lot better as well. Off to Belgium. According to the old social medias, Thibaut Debaye, not only does he have a new contract, but he's been fairly busy off the field as well. He's... He's become a bit of a lumberjack. We'll we'll try to get an explanation from him. Uh, we'll ask him him and his buddy Stain uh, chopping wood looked like. But we'll talk to him about being back, his journey from his home country to here. He did win a championship in his home country uh, as a young lad, and he's hungry to win another one. Thibaut Debaye coming up on First and Now. And off we go to Hestel, Belgium, home of our guest, BC Lions defensive lineman Thibaut Debaye. Uh, re-signed this week for 2024. Great to have him back. Tebow, what's happening, man? Nothing much. I'm just enjoying my time in Belgium right now. Spend some time with my family and uh, and friends. And yeah, I'm glad that I'm uh, that I'm back with the team. There wasn't really any other team that I wanted to play for. So I'm really glad to be back. Yes, uh, a lot of key guys uh, re-signing in the past few days. We'll get to that in a little bit, but. Uh, sticking with the Belgium theme here, uh, saw your buddy Stain, who we were lucky to meet this past summer. He came out for a couple of games. He did the full BC Lions game day tour and practice experience. Even saw him out here in Surrey, I think. 
Uh, you're helping them chop wood. What are you up to with staying here? Yeah, so uh, for for his job, he needed to uh, chop a lot of wood today, and uh, he was sh- short-handed. So I just went out there to help to, to help him out, and that was about it. You know, it was a good days of work today. Good workout. That yeah, I was gonna say that probably fits right in with uh, some of your training regimen, right? You're killing two birds with one stone, helping your guy and and uh, burning some calories. Uh, how how good was that? Uh, well, it was actually harder than I expected. I, I always think that I can lift a lot of weight, but then when I do a real job, it's a, uh, it's totally different than just squatting a lot of weight. It's a, uh, but it was good. It was a different kind of workout, but I liked it. We've talked about your journey, um, hailing from Belgium there, selected by Edmonton in the global draft and, uh, better fit here. You come over as a free agent, uh, Part of your journey, you started playing football as a teenager there in your home country, and your team actually won the Belgian Bowl, XXIX. I, I don't know what new Roman numeral that is off the top of my head, but... Um, uh, 24. 24. Oh, no, 29. 29, yeah. I, I think that's right. But it, I like it. It's the Super Bowl theme with the Roman numerals, for starters. Uh, what was that experience like winning your first football championship in Belgium? Oh, that was awesome. And unfortunately, it's been my last one so far. So hopefully we can change that around this season. But uh, no, it was awesome. And the funny story uh, for that game, our left tackle couldn't attend the game. So I had to play left tackle as well for the first time. So I was playing the end and left tackle throughout the whole game. And we ended up winning it. We were big underdogs, but we pulled out of the fire. And then Tebow, now like your person now who signed multiple contracts in Canada, so these past couple of seasons now playing professional football in North America, I'm sure nowadays there's been kids or even just people across the world who have brought or expressed interest in talking to you just to see what kind of path you took. Can you, can you, do you have any examples of that uh, these past couple of years now? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, like now in Europe, ever since, um, I went to college, there's been like, a whole uproar of uh european kids i want to go to college as well and i'm doing everything in my power to help those kids and give my experience and, and what they have to do and how they have to train and how they can get there and uh there's like a really global pop, a european pipeline now from europe to colleges in canada and america and it's it's great to see all these kids follow in my footsteps and that's that's what that's what it's all about just build up the future and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you were doing some coaching out in Belgium last year. And if if so, is that something you're doing again and, and trying to, um, I guess, shine more light on the Canadian and even the North American game of football? Uh, yeah. So last year I did it. It was with the team that I played for when I was in Belgium. And um, I'm doing the same thing this year as well. I'm going to uh, help out with the uh, under-19 national team as well for a little bit. Um, I won't be there for any games, but I'll, I'll try to attend all practices and uh, give my expertise to the to the kids so they can learn uh, a thing or two. Have you sat back now, now that you've signed multiple contracts in Canada, have you sat back and thought, like, I never would have thought I'd ever be in this position in my life, but now you are? Now you are? To be honest, it's still like, I'm still, like, in the days old. Like, ever since I've been 18, I've just been living out my wildest dreams. And I've said it before, but I, I never thought that I would play pro. My, my, my whole goal was to go to college and – and uh, play D1, and then anything after that is is great, and it's exceeded my wildest dreams. And I love to be in Canada. It's a beautiful country, and hopefully I can, I can stay there for, like, another 10 years. So I'll play as long as I can. I absolutely love Canada. Uh, FTC for the culture, uh, a big theme of last year. And when you see guys like Sione, uh, your, your teammate there on the defensive line, Josh Woods, another key piece to your unit, but even other guys like Hollins and Javon Katoy, multi-year deals. How exciting is that, uh, knowing that this core group is going to stay together for at least another year, maybe even more? Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. We've been, most of the guys have been there for, for at least two years now, and um, it's a great opportunity for us as a team to even get better. And um, the connection is, is already there between us. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to translate into the football field for sure. Um, how much does hunger play into this? Uh, knocking on the door the last couple of years, coming to an end in Winnipeg Western Finals. And I know that's going to be a big talking point in camp. 
uh, finishing one step higher, getting a West final at home. Of course, the Grey Cup is in our backyard. How much does this hunger make you more motivated to finish the job and get to the top of the mountain this year? Well, the hunger, of course, is huge. I don't really, I'm not a big believer in motivation. You just got to go out there and, and, and work your ass off every day. So I'm not really a big believer in motivation because sometimes you're not motivated and you still got to do it, you know. But, uh, yeah, the hunger is for sure is there. The Grey Cups and is, of course, at home. And uh, Coach Bowman always tells us just take, take it one game at a time. And it's worked out pretty good for us uh, over the last two years. We just got to get over that um, small hump. So hopefully we can we can do it this year. And we'll, we'll I know we'll do everything in our power to be in that great cup. But we'll just go one ga- game at a time, and then great things will happen. Taking it back uh, to Belgium, what Hestel? Uh, we talked about you uh, in your hometown. It's where you were born. Uh, yep. What's uh, What's that town known for other than producing superior athletes? Well, it's actually funny. We uh, from, from our hometown, actually one of the greatest cyclists that that have that have uh, been a pro cyclist is from our ho- hometown. His name is Johan Musil, and I think he still lives here as well. And like he's been into Tour de France, won, won all the biggest races that 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 he can win. So we're pretty known for our uh, for our cyclists. What else? Uh. That's about it, you know. It's 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 a really small town. It's a really, um, yeah. There's not a lot to do here, to be honest. But it's home for me, and I absolutely love it. Well, if you were, if someone was traveling to your country for the first time, I know lots of people who've been to Belgium. What what would you recommend? I know a lot of people probably go to Bruges. I'm not sure how close you are to there, but uh, chocolate, uh, perhaps a few beers. Uh, what's what would you indulge in? Um, so I would definitely say Bruges. That's about like a 20 minute drive for me. I'd go to the capital city of Brussels as well. It's very beautiful. Um, Hant, it's like a university city. That's where my sister goes to, to, uh, she attends university there. Um, yeah, she's way, way smarter than me as well. So, uh, <laughs> I'll go to Leuven as well. Antwerp is really nice. Um, there's a lot of beautiful cities in, in Belgium. And the thing is, it's like all very medieval, like in Hent, there's still like a castle up from the, I don't, I don't know which time, which time, but, um, it's all really, really beautiful. Once you get back to Vancouver, t I don't know, I don't know if you saw, but we, we just got some snow last week, but it's, it's all melted now. So the weather's better, but what are, what are some of the things you're looking forward to when, uh, when you come back to Vancouver here? Oh, just to, just to be, just to be with the boys, you know, just to be back with the team and, Vancouver is a city like we have it all we have the beaches the mountains like my, my walk from from our apartment last year to the facility we I could see the mountains in the mornings and that's just something that's you know it's it's priceless you know that's something I really miss and uh the people in, in Canada are also very friendly something that Europeans are sometimes not really known for so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to that Canadian hospital hospitality again as well and Overall, it's just a beautiful country. What's the terrain like where you are then? I'm guessing, like you just said, there's no mountains over there. It's more like flatland, or what's it like out in Belgium? I, 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 it's it's definitely not the same as like Vancouver or like uh, or or Banff for the Rocky Mountains. Like we we don't have anything like that. I'm pretty close to the sea. I think like 15 minute drive from the sea, and then around around my town, there's a lot of farmland. So maybe you can compare it to some parts of Alberta or uh, Saskatchewan. Oh, the best spots, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least it doesn't remind you of Winnipeg. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. But no, uh, no, not a <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you, you've talked about Coach Bowman and, and a few of your teammates. Uh, who, what are some examples, before we let you go, of, of maybe some other mentors, uh, people who have taken you under your wing, uh, maybe ever since you came to Canada, going back to your Edmonton days? Who else do you credit for helping you learn the adjustment? Well, I definitely have to give uh, a lot of credit to my college coach, uh, Coach Konstantinos Kosmakos for for friends we call him uh, Coach Gus. Um, he he's the first real like different defensive line coach that I've ever had, and he just uh, taught me everything I I know about the game and how to play the game and what mentality you have to have to play the game over here because there's still a very big difference between football over here in Europe and in the states and Canada. That's like it's life over here and in Europe is still a bit different. So that's something I really had to get used to. And he was also really hard on me, but um, 
it was all like it was all tough love and um yeah i just have to give a lot of credit to him and then also uh the whole reason why i ended up in college is it's brandon collier he actually played for winnipeg for a while yeah. um and then he moved to germany and it's and he discovered me at a all-star game in germany and now so he took me to college um got me my scholarship and now he has a whole organization it's called ppi recruits and um any kid that wants to go D1 and has the potential to go D1, he'll get him into school. And uh, without him, I definitely wouldn't be here. With Collier, when he was uh, getting to know you, did he mention to you about his time in the CFL? And I'm guessing at that point, you had probably never heard of the CFL even? No, I, I've heard of it. I've known of the CFL for quite a while now. I just never really um, watched any games. But I, I did know of the CFL, how the, like, the field was bigger. There were more people on it, like the – the yard in between the D line and the football, but uh, it's not like I knew any any like teams or whatever. I I, I actually did know uh, Montreal because of Chad Johnson. I was a huge Chad Johnson fan, hmm. and then I heard he signed with Montreal, so I definitely heard of the CFL. Uh, John Johnny Manziel too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I believe one Stephen Chang wrote a couple of years ago about your connection with with Brandon Collier and, and, and that whole outfit sounded yeah, very yeah, impressive. Yeah. Listen, uh, Tebow, keep chopping wood. Okay. Uh, say hi to Stain for us. We hope to see Stain out here again next summer. And Hey, can't wait, man. 2024, bring it on. Yeah, here we go. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks Tebow. See you in Kamloops probably. Thibaut Debaye back for 2024, an excellent discussion with him. And I'll tell you what, after we after we ended uh, the call, the Zoom interview, I, I googled Belgian chocolates. Very good. I have to make a trip one day. It's got you hungry for lunch here? We were joking about that too. Yeah. Thibaut's getting ready for bed and we're getting ready for lunch. Yeah, <laughs> nine hours ahead there in Hestel. I've heard good things about Belgium from people who visit. I've still never done Europe, period. So I'm... Um... I got I got to do it huh. one time. Yeah, I've uh, I've done eight days of my life in Europe. Did a London, did a quick. I think I told you this. Did a quick London Paris trip. Saw the 49ers and Jaguars at yep. Wembley. Took my wife to Paris after that. Bit of a birthday trip. Parlay it together, yeah. Yeah, I I was strategic. I said, hey, uh, you want to go to London and Paris for your birthday? Oh, there's a Niners game. There's one catch. <laughs> so convenient. Saw Colin Kaepernick just destroy Jacksonville and who was the Jags quarterback Bortles or like uh no third I was pre Bortles was it Case Keenum Ooh, Case that's, Keenum maybe yeah that's a name yeah see the game was so memorable I can't remember who yeah I think it was I think they drafted Bortles after that in 2014 Bortles was the Johnny Manziel draft year I think same second or third overall was was Blake Bortles yeah I think he was third yeah yeah crazy Case Keenum there you, there there it was Wembley Stadium was awesome, though. I bet, yeah. yeah those, those NFL games look cool. They actually just dropped one. Cody actually just sent me a link to it, actually. Uh, they dropped like uh, everything that goes into a football game, and it was based around the the one in Germany. I think it was Frankfurt, right? Yep. Um, and they, it was like a week-long kind of behind-the-scenes look at all like the event managers and television uh, directors and everything. It was, it was really cool. So she said, let's do that. And I said, we need a production crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll figure that out. Yeah, uh, it, it's what goes into it is, it, I'll tell you what, like from a production perspective, there is a reason there's a week off before the Super Bowl, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. we deal with it firsthand, uh, take some fans kind of behind the scenes, behind the curtain. We're getting ready to go to Winnipeg in the Western Final, and a lot of what I do is having to prepare for Grey Cup week when we're not sure we're even going to be in there. You know, you have to determine, like I saw both the Niners and the Chiefs social accounts posting like their green screen stuff in the jerseys with the patch more on the patch coming up in go for it or punt by the way and i'm looking at this and i'm realizing it must be beneficial having a whole week to get this stuff out of the way because um hey it's great stuff with our broadcast partner tsn and all the work they put in but in a gray cup situation a lot of that you have to kind of cram in around other events like the player awards, practicing, 
And it's a yeah. So all the media, all the build up, all the hype. Yeah, exactly. Professional football, they do, yeah, they do a great job at that. Both leagues. Exactly. Uh, you're off to Vegas with Moj, right? Yeah, Sunday afternoon. Awesome. And uh, talking with the, the big fella yesterday, there is a couple 49ers uh, connections with our team. Dre Greenlaw, Keon Hatcher are tight from their Arkansas days. Uh, Bo Lacumbo would have been with Eric Armstead at Oregon. And Johnny Holland uh, on the defensive coaching staff of the 49ers, uh, who's been battling cancer. Uh, Peter King did a nice little feature on him. Johnny Holland coached our linebackers here in 2014 and 15. So... So there you go. If you're on the fence on who to cheer for, I'm just saying there's a few other, there's a few connections, but you, you must be looking forward to it. You did it last year, but Vegas, you've been to, is this your first time in Vegas? It's my first time in How Vegas. How have you not been to Las Vegas? That's a good question. It, it aligns a lot with what I like to do, so I'm, I'm <laughs> I, should, I should take that back. <laughs> that could mean a lot of things. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I, Las Vegas. I like casinos. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Uh, I'm going to Vegas uh, in early March to see the Canucks. We've talked a bit about that. I'll look forward to play uh, play perhaps a, a few table games. I am looking into touring Allegiant Stadium when I'm there, by the way. So, yeah, Las Vegas, uh, I'm curious to see just how crazy it gets. Um, I, I think it was a no-brainer. They were going to get a Super Bowl once the stadium was built and they got the team, right? Yep. So we shall see how it goes. Yeah, I can't believe I said that. I want. I want. I don't want to leave that up in there, up to interpretation. No. I want to say I like. The, I like the bright lights. So I'm excited to go to. Yeah, you uh, like you know a little Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. I think. I like the. I like, I'm excited to go to a glamorous city. You're but, gonna go see a Cirque du Soleil show. You're gonna go see a. It seems like a full schedule at this point, but yeah. we'll see what happens. Just keep your eye on Moj. Is Julio going, or is it just you guys? I think it's just Moj. Okay. Yeah. Very much, uh, very much looking forward to seeing what you guys pump out content-wise. And yeah, keep it tuned uh, to our channels for some possible cross-promotion. One thing I am doing, uh, along with the hockey game next month, I'm going to see Carrot Top. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. We're look- thinking of, my dad and I are just thinking about kind of a good show. My dad's like, let's go see Carrot Top. Okay, sure. Get some laughs in, yeah. Yeah. Tickets are pretty affordable. He's at the Luxor. Where are you staying? Mandalay Bay, right? Mandalay Bay, yeah. yeah. That's where all the uh, Radio Row stuff is. Apparently, it's walking distance. That's that's the reason for are, it. Do they still call it Radio Row? Because it's yep. not just radio stations there anymore. Well, Mike Whittingham, Media Mike Row. Whittingham and Moj call it Radio Row, so it's Radio Row to me. Well, Whittingham still thinks it's like 1998, <laughs> so he's radios. Yeah, you're gonna have an angry text message coming yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll know we'll know if he's listening or not. Just kidding, Mike. We love you. Very much looking forward to it. Uh, we'll give our predictions perhaps uh, in a couple of minutes, but our new segment, our back by popular demand this episode, yeah. go for it or punt. We each pick one thing. We're going to go for it that we like. Punt it. We can do without. You want to start this one? Yeah, I'll start it off. I'll start it off in a really random direction here with my go for it. My go for it this episode is TikTok recipes. And why I say that is they've been a big help for me lately. I'm someone who lives in an apartment. I, I'm i cooking a little, not a little more. I'm cooking a lot more ever since I moved out here. Awesome. And I'm um, always looking for new recipes and all that, trying to kind of expand my my uh, menu. And uh, these, I, I got into an algorithm where I'm, these TikTok recipes pull up and there's kind of these like quick hitting videos. And I find like if, you, if you're looking for kind of old school, kind of older school, if you're looking for a recipe online, you Google it and it takes you to a website and it's like just kind of like a text and you have to like measure everything out and you're not like getting a good visual representation. And that's why I love these TikTok ones is it's like this quick hitting stuff where you see it being made. The The text is in the caption usually if you want to me- get all the measurements and all that. And I've been getting a lot of inspiration uh, from these recipes. I made this creamy garlic uh, pepper oh, stick. I got it right yeah. in front of me. So I made this yesterday. Um I can show the camera too if you're watching. I don't now, know if is you that see you it. making that on TikTok or is no, that the it, person you got it, the it recipe? Po- it pops up and it, they show like <laughs> like garlic and it's like a table. Yeah. Like they're showing how much they're putting into it and how they make it and how long they cook it and everything. And it's no ads too, right? If you go to YouTube, sometimes you have to watch those ads and everything. So these, and then then obviously it's TikTok, so you get in a little bit of a rabbit hole and you have you favorite twenty different recipes I might that you want to make. Recipe. But yeah. I, I've been big into them at least, so that's that's what I've been going for. All right. Uh, I'm going for it here, and again, hit on this just a few minutes ago as the Super Bowl preparation amps up. 
I just love the the Super Bowl logo patch yeah. on the jerseys. Just it just makes it more official. It adds something. Of course, I think it was Tuesday of this week. The Chiefs announced they were choosing red as the home team, and they do that little thing where they post the patch being put on. The Niners, I think, followed suit the next day with their white. It just adds something cool. And that's going to lead me to ask, Grey Cup, what says you? Why can't we have the Grey Cup logo patches on the team's jerseys? What about like every... We've, like, never, we, we've never had that, have what we? What about like every like special event too? Like even expand that out to like Touchdown Pacific. I yeah. It'd be cool to have like anything. Yeah. Anything special should be, yeah. I will say though, the Chiefs jersey though looks kind of busy because they have, what, what's that other logo they have? Is that the AFC logo they have? Oh, you put and me I on saw the spot. Some, I saw some people commenting, oh, it just looks too, but you have to have the patches. <laughs> so what I say to that is don't watch European sports if you don't like busy jerseys. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, I see, it's just like the just like NHL teams with the helmet ads. I remember at first people were like, oh, this is awful. This is awful. But people tend to don't adapt. Don't even know now, and, yeah. And get used to it. Digital ads on the boards, same thing. So there you go. I I, I understand maybe the Grey Cup logo. You're going to talk about Roman numerals, I think, here in a minute. But yeah. Maybe maybe they're not. Maybe the those logos don't change as much year to year. But I I say I say do it because the Van the the 111th Grey Cup logo for 2024 with the orange, very sharp. Yeah. And Put it on the jerseys. To tie into my punt here, I, I'm with you. And I, the Grey Cup, you have, it's, it's it's orange this year, right? Last year it was yellow for Hamilton. So it's definitely, it's unique each year. And the one thing that is unique is that it's a different number each year. It's a it's 111 for 111, not some uh, random Roman numeral that in the modern day, no one can really interpret what it was. We just we were just talking to Tebow. We had not none of the three of us knew what number that was in front of us. Right for the Roman numeral twenty nine X X I X. And the Super Bowl still does that. I I, I think people out loud will say uh, what, what you what Super Bowl is it sixty two? I think I'm totally off. Say again. The what Super Bowl is it this year? Sixty two. Fifty eight. Fifty eight. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally off. But no one knows what's fifty eight for Roman numeral. Let's look it you, up. You have to look it up. That's my point. And I think like ninety nine percent of society has to look that up. Yeah, because I was going to, I was going to tie. I, I'm glad we're looking it up because it was going to tie into what you're saying here. Yeah, for the most part, I I have a hard time disputing that. But I will say, if you look at the logo closely, the L V I I I is fifty eight. But no one knows what that means. So, but if you look closely, there's like a silhouette of the Vegas Strip inside the Roman numerals. Like I see, like the, wel- cool, yeah. the "Welcome to Las Vegas" sign. I guess these other thing. I know. Sorry if you're listening. This doesn't do it justice. But those want to can't even see that on the camera. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, I I think I'll go with that. But I will say, when you really look at this logo closely, it it gets a little better if you look at the silhouette. It's cool, but the logo says L-V-I-I-I. How many people do you think, uh, like casual people think the L-V means Las Vegas and not the Roman numeral? It's probably more than that know the Roman numeral, if you get what I'm saying. The one time they went away from this, remember, was Super Bowl 50, because they made a big thing about the 50th anniversary. And that logo was sharp. And they used a number. And they used a number, and it looked good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm putting those Roman numerals, though. Yeah. Great Cup 111. Love the patches on the jersey, though, no matter what the logo is. We'll get, so. we'll get a nice, yeah, we'll get the best of both worlds, hopefully, in the future. Okay, I'm punting, uh, sticking with the Super Bowl theme. I've heard a few talking heads and a lot of fans, and if you're a fan, I just chalk that up to you being a hater and not liking these either two teams, but some of these national media types who don't love the Niners-Chiefs rematch. Hey, look, think of the storylines here. Are you kidding me? You have to be kidding me. Kansas City going for back-to-back hasn't happened in over 20 years. The current dynasty. Uh, The 49ers, a team that's been good for a while, been knocking on the door, haven't finished the job. How can you not like this, that it's a rematch from four years ago? Remember when there was Patriots-Giants, same thing, four years apart. People didn't complain, did they? No. Well, I think Kind of surprised at some of the people who... And I get it. The Detroit Lions were a great feel-good story. I know... Lamar Jackson, Baltimore, he's going to win the MVP. Yeah, a Baltimore-Detroit Super Bowl would have been very intriguing, but it's not a bad option, I'm just saying. What I like about this matchup, too, is that it's kind of the two powerhouses colliding right now, right? You yeah. have KC with Mahomes and Andy Reid, obviously, the 
kind of they're they're treading toward that D word with this, right? And and then you got the Niners who have probably been the best team in the league. Uh, them in Baltimore, right? And the Niners definitely in the most NFC. consistent. Yeah, yeah, in the NFC for sure, right? The Niners have been the best team this season, so they they get a chance to prove it. And it is funny. Remember, go back to Christmas Day. Remember the Chiefs lost to the Raiders at home when every everyone was writing them off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I talked and, about this. I was done with KC. But I've, then I've been done with KC. I, I don't then, get them. Yeah, the prime time the prime time game that night was uh, the Niners kind of getting exposed against Baltimore, and, and that got me all in on yeah. Baltimore. <laughs> and now, well, that's oh, Lamar Jackson's the MVP. <sighs> that's it. I don't get it. Yeah, the segue. I'm torn with this game. I have I, yeah. I have no idea who's going to win. Um, I consistently go against KC, and I'm consistently wrong. Uh, I I I love the Niners, but I'm scared. KC yeah. scares me, so I, I'm torn. Like. My my head kind of says San Fran, but then I that boogeyman of Andy Reid and Mahomes come up and I get scared. But yeah, and hey, listen, of course I'm going to pick the Niners, okay? <laughs> right. Your heart. But <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. This um, I am I surprised that they are the favorite as of now. That it, it's come down though. It started at two and a half, and is it down to one? That's crazy to me too. So is this going to be a pick 'em by game day? Probably. Mahomes has been a dog and two underdog in two straight playoff games. Maybe yeah, three now. That's crazy. Yeah, it scares so, me. If you like making money, though, you're happy because you can get these plus money underdogs for a KC. But. Niners thirty one twenty seven. There you go. That's what you got. Oh, okay, and I'll, just for the record, I was four and zero two weeks ago when we picked the divisional <laughs> round. I had Kansas City as my only road team, and I was gonna pick Niners Chiefs if we did an episode last week. So. Not I mean, that, that, not my, that anybody cares. In my defense, if you watch that divisional game between Green Bay and San Fran, I think Green Bay was a better team, and they just kind of blew it. But yeah, that's why it. they play sixty <laughs> minutes. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and San Fran's gotten by. So I don't know. I guess that's, the Niners are better at quarterback this go around too, right? With Purdy compared to Garoppolo, and that's well, a, that, is, that's a big losing factor the last time around. Right? It is kind of funny. The Niners are much better on offense this time, and a lot worse on defense. And Casey's probably and, better on defense. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So. so should be a great game, though. That's kind of what you yeah. hope for. And if anybody's mad about this matchup, it's there's so many it's superstars. Just yeah, I think last weekend, maybe not Detroit. Actually, no. Um, yeah, all four teams last weekend. There was so much superstar talent around all the four teams. I love. I love just sitting on my couch and watching. It felt like a Pro Bowl, but was the, game, the four? Yeah, it felt like they were Pro Bowls, but they were actually trying. That's how much like superstar talent was on all four teams. So it was cool to see, and should be the same this weekend or next weekend. Love it. Can't wait. All right. uh, You have a good trip to Vegas. Thank you. I'll enjoy it. Yes. Be safe, as Moj would say. And then right when we get back, it's free agency. Right there. Yeah, there you go. February 13th. Lock it in. February 11th, Super Bowl Sunday. We're loving February so far. Uh, Be sure to subscribe, rate, leave a review. Uh, Check us out on YouTube. Prior episodes, Ryan Rigmaiden talking uh, earlier, a couple weeks ago, uh, I should say. Excellent interview with him on uh, the player evaluation season. VA doing a great job recruiting these potential signings. Love it. Football north of the border is in the air. First and now. We'll be back in the coming days. Be safe. <laughs>